Hey, it's Tom from WTFF and 3D Starpoint back here with the second video in this series regarding the CEL Robox Dual 3D printer. So, um, one thing I want to point out, this is, I think, an important little tip. Um, when I unpacked the printer, I followed the quick start guide, and it told me to remove the tape from the door here, lift it up, and there was a a clip, a 3D printed clip in here that was, I guess, uh, that it was fixing the position of the print head and the bed for transportation. You don't want those things sliding around and to get damaged. And it told me to remove it and to move by hand the print head and the bed. It said you can move the print head side to side freely by hand and move the bed front to back freely by hand. So I did that. Then as I was, you know, learning about this door and really playing with it, uh, in reality I was playing with it, and I closed it. And at this point the printer is not turned on. And I have not installed the software yet. But um, the bed position, when I had moved it, I didn't move it all the way forward. And there's nothing in the quick start guide that tells you if you don't move that bed all the way forward, when you close that door, it's going to lock. So it actually locks the door on me um, when I did that, you know, because I didn't know when I moved this bed by hand, if I don't want that door to lock, I need to move it all the way forward. Um, I learned the hard way. Um, maybe it would have been nice if there was a little mention in the quick start guide about that. But once you install the software to your computer and then connect it with the printer, there is a simple button you can push to unlock the door and then it electronically, you know, it moves the bed forward and unlocks the door. So, um, not the end of the world, but was a little disconcerting in the beginning. I was worried that I really did something wrong or did some damage to the printer. Why was it locked? You know, I didn't even know that the door did lock because I hadn't read anything about that yet. So anyway. Um, minor issue, uh, but just keep that in mind that this door does lock and um, if that bed isn't all the way forward when you shut it, you're going to have to use the software to unlock it. So now we're at the point of loading filament. Now I want to show you um, the filament spools for this 3D printer are very specific and these are made by Polymaker, I believe. Uh, well, this says Robux PLA. There's another one I have that says Polymaker. But in any case, um, you can see inside the hub of this spool there are some little metal contacts and there's a chip in there. Now, this hub stays stationary and the filament spool spins around it, but that chip tells the 3D printer what kind of material is in there and what temperature to run it at, what feed rate, all that, you know, good stuff. Um, in general, I've never been a big fan of proprietary filament or needing, you know, having chips in the spools and it's probably the first thing that I'll try to get around just to make my life easier because I've got, you can't really see it on the camera right now, but I've got probably about two dozen different spools of different colors of PLA and that's very important to me to be able to change colors easily. Um, so, you know, according to the manufacturer, I would probably need to buy two dozen different spools of all the different color material that they have. And I'm probably not going to do that, just to be perfectly honest with you. But, I am going to use and load their filament into it to do it properly the first time and um, experience the printer. So I'm going to go and load filament. Now their quick start guide does tell you when you are going to load filament to cut it perpendicular to the length of the filament as sort of square as you can. And that's actually a difference from a lot of other 3D printers that I've experienced. A lot of them um, in order for the filament to flow through the Bowden tubes, or for this is for Bowden 3D printers obviously, Bowden style, but in order to flow through all the tubes properly, you want to cut that filament tip at an angle, and but sort of like a spear, if you can, um, to keep it away, any, any you know, uh, hard edges, or, you know, away from the theoretical 
cylindrical perimeter of this end of filament so that it will ramp in and, and go smoothly along the path but this 3D printer says hey cut it as square as you can and then the other tip that they give you because the spool mounts here on the side I'm actually gonna turn the 3D printer so you can see this a little better the spool mounts right here um, and you feed it here now of course this is a dual 3D printer so you can have two materials at once um, you the the way that works is you install the first spool right here and over here down in the lower left corner of this lighter you know blue spool chamber there's a number one and a number two with an arrow there and that's where you feed this little end of filament and that actually what I've seen here from what I've seen of this printer so far I really like that's a very simple hey you feed your filament there you push it in until the motor starts to grab it and then pull it and then you're all set. So it, it will pull it in and auto feed it for you. It'll heat up the head and then, you know, that's it. You're good to go. Then you install the second spool. And I'm going to go through that here on this video and show you. So that, that's really what this video is about today is, uh, right now is about loading the filament. Now they do recommend you load and start threading that filament in that number one um, guide path without the spool being put onto the mount. You just push it in, and now I've pushed it to a point where it's turned on, you can hear the fan, and you're supposed to continue pushing it until the motor actually starts pulling it, which now it has pulled it, so I'm gonna stop pushing it. Yep, now it's pulling it in on its own. So, that's great. And then I'm gonna mount the spool Whoa, it's pulling in quite a bit of filament, so I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to... Alright, so now I'm going to mount the spool. Now there are these big notches, top and bottom here, on this spool that correspond with some geometry here uh, on the, the hub of the spool. So I'm going to line them up, push it on there. And now that I've done that, the chip is connected with the 3D printer so it knows what kind of filament is here and it is I'm looking at the software and I'm going to talk about the software in the next video but um, it seems to be saying the filament is unknown and I'm not entirely sure why but it certainly did pull the filament in and I can see in the printer when I look in here that the color of this orange filament is flowing all the way through there's a tube leading actually two tubes leading to the back of the printhead and it's all the way there. So it's saying that number one is unknown filament which surprises me because it's not unknown. I told it now what it is uh, in the software I could actually select it and tell it what the material is and then it, it's, so it's an orange Robox um, PLA and it then you know displayed it and, and shows it there on the um, screen so now this is the interesting part about this dual 3d printer uh, in order to attach a second spool I mean you can see you know there's an arrow here where we push and load that filament which is great um, that, that's pretty easy to do but then how do you mount another spool well they have an extension here it comes out it's you push it from the inside here of the chamber and it, it snaps in place and then ah, now I'm, I'm also seeing that uh, on the software the it has read the chip because it not only knows exactly um, not only does it know exactly what kind of material it is it knows how much is left on the spool so anyway uh, there is an extender here that it says real two on it and on the other side of it it really is similar to the hub of the spool so uh, there are some notches and things that snap in place and I'm gonna put it on and let's see there we go get it to snap in place and 
appears to be good snapped in place and then I can take another spool of filament and put it on there so I should have that ready sorry about the noise and maybe a 10 second delay here I should have had it out of the plastic and ready to go but I've got another another spool and this one is actually made by Polymaker. It's a it's a PLA based uh, wood colored material, and I'm going to go ahead and load that up. And in the same way as I discussed before, I'm going to cut off the end of the material for good measure, as close to 90 degrees away as I can. And then I'm going to take the end of it and load it right down into the guide path for filament number two. And this time, once it starts grabbing it, I'm going to attach the spool right away so it knows what it is. All right. All right, now it's pulling it. So, oh, and I put it on. And you know what? Right away, once I put the spool on, the 3D printer knows what the material is and it started to load it. So you can see here it's continuing to rotate as it's pulling more material in to the point where it's loading it to the head. That's pretty simple filament loading in, in my experience. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the chip and the limitations that you know presents to the user in terms of uh, how easy it is to change filament and then of course having to buy, you know, different filament just specifically for using on this 3D printer but like I said I, I think I'll I'll have a you know a hack sort of for that um, a hardware hack if nothing else um, but you know I'll, I'll get into that later in more detail I, I want to experience the printer the way it's intended and I'm going to turn it a little bit more so it's easier to use and see and then I will start using the software and that'll be my next video is about using the automaker software from CEL Robox and uh, starting to prepare and send my first print to the printer and then we're gonna get more advanced after that because I'm really gonna get into the details of making some two color prints and testing the quality and uh, the ease of use of accomplishing all that so anyway I uh, hope you enjoyed this video stay tuned there'll be another one as, we, as I said, I uh, look forward to seeing you on that one. Thanks very much.